Well, thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike Bono, and it's the weekend. Looking at some stormy weather, even this morning in parts of Ohio, moving out of Detroit, Michigan, and more storms in the Midwest during the day. More on that to come, but let's take a look at the tropics, which have all of a sudden gotten active. Now, last week it was Hawaii getting threatened, but now it's the Atlantic. This storm watch, sponsored by Gigo.com. Looking at Hurricane Alberto, the first of the season, moving out of the Cape Verde Islands. That's why we call them Cape Verde storms when they get started all the way out to the west. With a pretty low latitude, 14.4, but this one got started down closer to 10 degrees north of the equator and south of the Cape Verde Islands. But winds are now estimated at over 80 miles an hour, moving west at 17, as you see, had been moving north or west-northwest, which raises the possibilities of a curve up into the Atlantic or at least missing the islands. But now that it's going westbound again, we're more concerned that it uh, will make tracks toward the islands of the Caribbean in the next several days. Pressure estimated 988 millibars. So this being a hurricane, a small one nonetheless, you could see a lot of sort of scattered convection, meaning high-level clouds. Again, this is the coast of West Africa and the Cape Verde Islands. But recently, it's kind of gotten focused right around the middle, and probably this canopy of high cloud tops, up to maybe 50,000 feet or so, right about over the eye. So it's relatively small and compact, but very well put together. We have an upper-level high-pressure system with the high clouds fanning out or diverging aloft and a lot of converging clouds and a deep tropical feeder band coming into it. So it's looking quite healthy right now as it tracks to the west. So uh, with respect to the rest of the land masses, we could see Africa, we see North America, the Caribbean. One thing we're noticing is that things are moving really from east to west for the first time this season. Yes, there is some high-level southwesterly wind, but it's around an upper-level high, and even that is retrograde or moving westward. So it looks like this one has a good shot of continuing its westward movement without veering sharply up to the north and out to sea. Even a disturbance in the subtropics, again, is moving westward. So that seems to be the push right now. Let's not ignore what's going on here, by the way. We do have a pretty good development of clouds and showers from north and east of the Leeward Islands to east of, say, Trinidad and Tobago. So a developing tropical wave, which we'll have to watch. Now, it is close to South America, but this one needs to be watched as it moves toward the Caribbean for possible development. Meanwhile, another disturbed area of weather over the northwest Caribbean and toward the Yucatan that has a little bump of an upper-level ridge over it. Not really in any great hurry to develop right now, but uh, we'll keep our eye on it nonetheless. Again, Alberto, and also a pretty strong tropical wave that seems to be developing some heavy rains right now. Well, the latest forecast from Dr. William Gray, and this will be the last update of the, of the hurricane season, down from 12. In fact, name storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes down one notch from the previous forecast. But all three of these are above the average for a hurricane season, so we're still expecting a pretty uh, active season, although getting underway later than it could have. Looking at the dots that go all the way out to Africa the first 10 days of August, thus the Cape Verde season commences. Over the years, we've had maybe one out of every two years with a development in the first 10 days of August. And again, during the month, anywhere in the deep tropical Atlantic is fair game. We also have Tropical Depression Fabio, which is moving west at nine miles an hour, was a storm. And also Tropical Depression Gilma was a storm, moving west-northwest at 12. Now Fabio is uh, faltering with some small areas of convective clouds out there, but Gilma has a large canopy of intense rainfall, although the center is located somewhere to the east. So this one has a pretty decent shot at recovering toward tropical storm status, although they're both moving out to sea. Meanwhile, we have a typhoon. It's up to 110 mile an hour winds just east southeast of Okinawa and the string of islands south of Japan and a large eye. So this is definitely a threat to these islands and to the East China Sea after that. Back to the States, we have a very active frontal system that uh, already is dropping some rains through the Midwest. More of a chance of that later in the day. Stay tuned for more. This program was sponsored by Gigo.com. We've got this car thing down. Bristol. Your forecast.
your extended forecast. minutes now before the top of the hour. Thanks for joining us. Flash flooding continues over parts of Pennsylvania, Maryland, and West Virginia. We'll have a close-up radar in just a minute, but first we'll turn it over to Dr. Steve Lyons for more on Hurricane Alberto. Well, thanks, Marnie. And we're monitoring four features in the tropical Atlantic today, and including, of course, uh, Hurricane Alberto and a couple of tropical systems in the eastern Pacific. Here they are here circled. Of course, here's Alberto way out here in the central Atlantic, still intensifying ever so slowly, moving to the west. We have a tropical wave here, and uh, the southern portion of it is going to bring showers to the islands here in the next 24 hours, so we're monitoring that. The extreme western and northwestern Caribbean is acti acting up a little bit. We've got some clouds over there and a low-pressure center in the pressure field, but not in the wind field we're monitoring as it slides to the northwest. This other little vortex we've been monitoring a few days up here in the southwestern North Atlantic, moving toward the west in the general direction of Florida, we're monitoring as well. So let's go first to the hurricane out here. Here it is way out in the in the middle of the Atlantic, still about 1,100 miles from the Windward Islands here, so we're, we're still well away from land with this system, and it's very tiny. In fact, it's very, very small and not producing much in the way of waves unless you're right in the center of the circulation. And so we're monitoring that very carefully, but doesn't appear to be a land threat at this time. Here's the latest from the Hurricane Center. Just about 15 and 36, but 14.9, 36 west. Winds 80 miles per hour, moving west at 13. And that motion has slowed down a little bit. It was moving at about 17, so it slowed down ever so slightly. Pressure 987 millibars. Here's a close-up view of it, and you can see that it does have an eye there and a, a ring of deep thunderstorm activity around it, which is the eye wall. And uh, it's very fragile. It's been mod uh, up and down a little bit, but the Hurricane Center is forecasting a little further strengthening before uh, the next 72 hours is up as it moves to the west and then west-northwest as an upper level wind out of the southwest continues to uh, cause it to turn on toward a little more northwest track. The low pressure in the western Caribbean is somewhere over in this area, mostly over land, but there's quite a bit of shower activity over the water area, so we're monitoring that very carefully as it slides basically up toward the Yucatan Peninsula, bringing some shower activity over the Cayman Islands, and it'll bring some showers over the Yucatan Peninsula the next 24 hours. So if you're heading that way, watch out for the thunder and lightning. And a weak trough also extends up toward the southern Florida Keys, and that's the general direction we're heading with that one, so we'll monitor that very carefully. Gulf of Mexico, very quiet today, uh, in the rest of the Gulf anyway. And here's this system moving in the general direction of Florida here, uh, but uh, we, we have an upper trough in here, so we expect this system to come around and swing back to the north. We're monitoring it anyway, and a couple of systems out in the eastern Pacific as well. Neither is affecting land. Let's get back to Marnie in the studio now. Thanks, and we're checking out, we're watching the possibility for severe storms today. If you live in the areas in red, say Detroit, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Indianapolis, St. Louis, you all have a chance for rough weather. We've already had some strong storms this morning, so stay tuned for more. We're also seeing some flooding occurring over parts of southwestern Pennsylvania, western Maryland, and northern West Virginia. For about a six-county area here, from Garrett to Fayette County, and also Green, Marshall, Preston, and Westmoreland counties, you're all under warnings for flooding. We're scrolling the information right down on the bottom of your screen, but flooding is occurring right now. These are flash flood warnings because of all the rain you've received. More rain stretching all the way back through parts of Missouri and Kansas. You're hearing some thunder in parts of Kansas, some lightning strikes associated with that, and a lot of lightning associated with all the rain that we're watching as far as the flooding goes in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and West Virginia. We do expect more to fall here, so the flooding is not over yet. Dew points very high in the southeast, sticky and uncomfortable outside today. Temperatures high heat indices will be very uncomfortable as you head out. The current weather picture, we show you the storms along the warm front today. We'll watch this and monitor the potential for more flooding and more dry conditions, unfortunately, for wildfires in the west and for all the firefighters. We'll be right back with Weather Center next. AC not working? Don't go to extremes. Go to Penske Auto Center for Penske Max Air AC Recharge Service. Penske Max Air AC Recharge Service, special $129.99 price, includes up to two pounds of refrigerant. Forgettable feeling 
of flying. Feel that ageless thrill again at the one theme park with the most rides on Earth. Six Flags Great Adventure. Buy one admission, get one free with coupons from Acme. Enter a vast world of water adventure. The new Six Flags Hurricane Harbor. It's America's largest water park. Next to Six Flags Great Adventure. Now, it's time for your local forecast on the Weather Channel. Currently in your area, 73 degrees with rainy conditions. Your forecast. Your extended forecast. Storm Watch. I'm Nick Walker. We have severe weather across portions of Illinois and Iowa. More expected as we get through the evening hours. We'll get to that in a moment, but let's start with the tropics on this tropical update. And we have a hurricane, the first hurricane in the Atlantic to talk about. This is Hurricane Alberto. Its location, well away from any land masses right now, at 1,570 miles east of the Windward Islands, with winds of 85 miles an hour, beginning to get a little bit more strength here, moving toward the west, northwest, at about 12 miles an hour. Hour. This is Alberto. We've been watching it since it was a wave off of Africa last Wednesday. Pretty tight circulation, as you can see, and another wave following on its heels right off the coast here. Now, this is moving into, well, marginal water temperature for, uh, for development, for strengthening, but we very well could see some strengthening up to around a 90-mile-an-hour hurricane over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. But uh, the water temperatures here kind of marginal for uh, a lot of strengthening going on here. Big picture in the Atlantic, there's Alberto right out here. Also watching a couple of areas of thunderstorms, and this one in particular here in the Caribbean. If uh, it moves over the Yucatan Peninsula into the Bay of Campeche, closer to Mexico and the United States, it may pose some threat. It's not a tropical storm, it's not a tropical depression, but uh, we will be monitoring this area of thunderstorms pretty closely, as we are all of these. This one right here, it actually could kick up a few waves on the east coast of the United States over the next few days as it continues to push toward the coastal regions. Just an area of thunderstorms right now could affect Bermuda. This area right here affecting the Lesser Antilles with some gusty winds, some rain, and some thunderstorms. So, again, this is one to watch right here in the Caribbean. It's not a... Uh, storm as of yet, but again, we're watching that very closely. We're